Hi everybody, Jacob Breed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be looking at 2022's Macroeconomics AP exam. This is set one, question number one. In order to be fully ready for this question, you should be through unit five. If after watching this video, you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. Let's get into it. Now this question starts off with a country that is currently operating below full employment. We're going to draw an ASAD model graph showing the long run and short run aggregate supply curves and the aggregate demand curve. We're going to label the current equilibrium output and price level Y1 and PL1 and the full employment level of output YF. We're going to start off by labeling our axes PL and RGDP and have our downward sloping aggregate demand curve upward sloping short run aggregate supply curve and between those we have our current real output labeled Y1 and current price level labeled PL1. And if you have that there, you get your first point. In order to get the second point, we need to add in the long run aggregate supply curve. It will be to the right of our current output labeled Y1 and underneath that long run aggregate supply curve, you're going to label the full employment level of output YF. That will be your second point on this graph. So for part B, we have to identify one fiscal policy action that the government could take to restore the economy to full employment. And if we look back at our graph from earlier, we can see that this economy is suffering from a recessionary gap. That's because the full employment level of output of YF is greater than the current level of output of Y1. In order to answer this question, we should remember that government spending is going to increase GDP while government taxes will decrease GDP. So if we're trying to increase real GDP output, that leads us to two possible answers. We can either increase government spending or decrease taxes. Either one of those answers will get yourself a point. For part C, we're going to assume that no fiscal policy is action, and instead there's a change in investment spending that causes real GDP to increase by $200 billion. We're going to calculate the minimum change of investment spending that could have caused this increase in real GDP. And we know that the marginal propensity to save is 0.25. We also have to show our work here. In order to answer this question, we need to remember that new spending times the multiplier equals the change in real GDP. Here we're going to have to use algebra to rearrange this formula and find that the change in real GDP divided by the multiplier we're about to figure out will equal the new spending that caused the change. Our spending multiplier is one divided by the marginal propensity to save, and that means our spending multiplier is one divided by 0.25, which is four. And that's the first part of the work you need to show. And then we're gonna plug in the numbers and find the new spending. So that's $200 billion of the change in GDP divided by the four spending multiplier equals $50 billion of the initial change in investment that caused the overall change in GDP. And if you have that work there, you got your point. For part D, we're going to assume that the recessionary gap that we've already seen on our graph is worth $800 billion. And then we're going to show the short run impact of the change in investment that we identified in part C on the price level and real output. We're gonna label them Y2 and PL2. And as we should already know, the increase in gross investment is going to cause the aggregate demand curve to shift to the right, but the change in real output is only going to be $200 billion and the gap is 800 billion. That means the change in real output is less than the output gap. So while the aggregate demand curve is going to shift to the right, it's not going to be enough to fully reach YF or the full employment level of output. Now you don't have to draw it to scale or anything like that. But if you shift it to the right, but don't bring the new output all the way to YF, but make sure that Y2 is still less than YF, and you'll get yourself a point. For part E, we have to say if the current rate of unemployment after the shift we just drew is greater than, less than, or equal to the natural rate of unemployment. And we have to explain. And as we already saw in the graph we just drew, we still have a recessionary gap. It's just a smaller gap. So that means that the answer is going to be greater than because the current output is less than the full employment output. So there is still a recessionary gap. And if you have an answer something like that, you get yourself a point. For part F, we have to assume that private savings is going to increase in this country. We're going to draw a correctly labeled graph of the loanable funds market and show the effect of the increase in private savings on the interest rate. When we draw out this graph, we're going to label the y-axis real interest rate and the x-axis quantity of loanable funds. We'll have a downward sloping demand curve upward sloping supply curve, and we have to mark our equilibrium real interest rate and our equilibrium quantity of loanable funds. And if you got that there, you get your first point for this graph. Next, we're going to show the increase in savings. It's that upward sloping supply curve that I often call the savings supply. 
Since private savings have increased, that's going to be shown as an increase in the supply of loanable funds shifted to the right, which causes the real interest rate to decrease and the equilibrium quantity of loanable funds to increase. And if you have that correct shift with the impact on that real interest rate, you get yourself a point. For part G, we're going to say, based solely on the interest rate change we just saw in part F, what happens to the real GDP in the short run? And we have to explain. Now, in this question, we have some breadcrumbs guiding us to what they want us to do. The focus here is the change of real GDP and how it is caused by the real interest rate change we just identified. And real interest rates change GDP primarily through changes in gross investment. So we're going to say increase because there will be an increase in gross investment, although it will also change interest rate sensitive consumption, which shifts aggregate demand to the right. And that causes the equilibrium real GDP output to increase. For part G double I, we have to explain how that will impact long run aggregate supply. And as I just mentioned in the previous answer, gross investment is going to increase. And that leads us to our answer here. But we also need to remember that the long run aggregate supply curve is equal to potential real GDP output. So the long run aggregate supply curve is going to increase or shift to the right because the lower interest rate will increase gross investment, which increases the physical capital stock, leading to higher potential real output. And if you have an answer something like that, you get yourself a point. And there you have it. Those are the answers to the Macroeconomics 2022 AEP exam set one, question number one. If you still need more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up that total review booklet. That's it for now. I'll see you all next time.